All right, ladies and gentlemen, so welcome back. I am just came in from outside doing a little shooting. I was gonna record a knuckleball video with um, the volleyball. This might also be my new recording setup for what I decide to, when I decide to. This will be turned like when I record. This will be turned. I'll have a good little setup in the background. Both Chelsea FC and Liverpool FC things sitting in the background, which I do like. I like that. Uh, I wish I could go more this way, but if I bring you this way, you have that glare in the background, which I don't really like. I could also find a different setup. I have a couple different ideas. I have a couple, which I might try. Um, but in terms of recording quality, I don't know where this is going to stand. See, I'm trying to figure these out while I work. Like, trying to... This is more of a test run for this setup. And I'm also leaving for Pennsylvania on Wednesday. Today is Monday. I came back from the gym earlier today. I go to the gym in the mornings. So from 6.30 to 7.30, I'm at the gym. So I can't record anything in the mornings. Because when I come back, I'm dead tired. Um, so needless to say, Wednesday is going to be a fun day. Because I'm literally... Being picked up from the gym, 7.30. We're leaving for um, Pennsylvania at 9. So 7.30, and I have an hour and a half till I leave. So I'll, I'm not going to sleep until I get in the car. When I get in the car, I might try and sleep. I don't think I will, though, because at that point it'll be bright. Um, so needless to say, these are going with me. Little universal weights that I have. Um... These might come as well, just because I don't really have anything to work on grip strength there. I'd love to keep my grip strength up while I'm there. And the green band might have a little bit of work that I can do with the green band. Um, so that might come in handy, doing a couple of round of knees. A little test of my strength on my knees and stuff. I don't know. Um, might bring a sandbag. I don't know. I'm definitely going to bring the weights, though. They're very um, easy to bring with me. I could definitely fit them in a suitcase. Because I can take the plates off, put the rod in, put the plates in laying flat instead of like this. And then it'll take up almost no room in my bag. And I can fit both in. Obviously the sandbag's are flat. That the band is flat and these are obviously quite flat as well. So those will go with me. Oh my god, I was looking for these. Yes, I was looking for these when I was working with my brother in my room. Because me and my brother like to do workouts in my room at night. On days where I don't go to the gym, I was looking for a carabiner. I couldn't find one. And there's one chilling there. Uh, so obviously, in the next couple like hours, I'm gonna try. I like that light setup. I don't think it, cause it's kind of like I think it's it's not an LED light, so that's the thing. I'm kind of worried about getting too hot. But considering it's only been on for about 10, 15 minutes now, it's no, not even 10, probably like five. It's not going to be that hot. I'm trying to figure out where I want to really do a setup. I was like, I want to get a good setup. I'm thinking in this area, like right here, or maybe even um, I could find some place in my room where I can do a nice setup. But it's going to be hard to find a nice setup place where I could. I, I want to display these. I want to display at least the Liverpool one behind my setup, which is in potentially a scar for two. I don't know. Definitely, I'll put the flags up in the background. I'll probably put those up behind because those are pretty good. Um, just covering up in the back. Um, that, this, I might put in the setup just because it's flat. takes up a little bit of space. Um, I really wanted... I like this area over here. Um, right to my... Right here, which is right here. I like this. I was gonna put a nice little setup up top, face it this way. The only problem with that is I need to find some way to cover up all the light coming in from this direction, so from the window. And I can keep these in the background on the bed and they would work perfectly, which is what I want. I want them to be in the background because they're so cool. How many people can say they've been there, been there, done that, and had that? 
many people can say they've been to four different four of the stadiums three of which are huge stadiums Stanford Bridge is a Chelsea is a very historic club Liverpool very historic club um, uh, Man City champions two years in a row historic club unfortunately two years in a row they've been champions they should have been champions this year but whatever let's not talk about that I love to find just some way to get this in the background but I'm trying my best to do this this setup will be quite difficult because I'm going to have to put something in the background because there's a bunch of crap here for my workout for when I do workouts and everything well I'm going for a haircut later I really need a haircut it's super long in the back I mean I love to fit these in because these have brought me so far these have brought me from these have been my cleats for two years three years this is my third season going into my third season having these I want to be a predator I'm going to be a predator lover for life these are very worked so they're very valuable like you can squish bend do anything you want with them because they're so soft because I've worked with them so like the more you work and break in cleats the better off they are and these are so good because these break in so fast like you can break these in so fast and they just keep getting more more and more comfortable to wear even if like maybe say you're half a size too big these will still feel comfortable which I love about them and those will be on display once I retire those those will be on display in my room just like these are on display in my room now the T90s which I think back in 2012 was a very revolutionary design they brought the laces they brought the laces off to the side away from your striking area and put extra grips on the striking area which if you look at the predators now if you look at how the predators are they removed the laces from the striking area hold on Jesus there's no good lighting here is there they removed the laces from the striking area so right in here and they've also slightly brought them this way they've slightly brought them um, to the side away from where you strike and then obviously they've got the little ridges which you can kind of see in camera there you go now you can see the little ridges which I love about these like they've got the little ridges extra curl extra grip everything you need to control a soccer ball better and it goes the whole way into the instep whole way around the front to the outside of the foot so if you're making one of those outside of the foot passes like people love to make now you can do it I'd also love to display uh, my Call of Duty case nice little shiny metal case both Call of Duty I love this there was the Call of Duty game disc and there was the Call of Duty install disc like the install disc is right here and the game disc is here so you'd have to put this in it download all the game software and everything and you put this in and it could play and you could actually play the game it's kind of funny how that works now you just slap it now you just put one disc in it downloads and you're good to go like, I wish I had more space in my room I don't have much I don't have a lot of space left in my room so like very limited downstairs I want to make a recording. I want to make a little recording set up downstairs so we could possibly be downstairs doing recordings instead of here. But like here works. This little corner, I really love this little corner. It works. Like, but for gaming setups, I don't have a good setup downstairs. I'd love to have one, but I don't. Like, if I really wanted to do this, I could spend money on Christmas. Like, screw it. I'll get the new games I want. I'll spend 150 bucks on the new games I want. Because New Forza comes out October. And there's November, December. They come out in October. What's going on? Yeah, that's what's going on. I think the new Forza comes out in August. And obviously... Is August, September, October is when F uh, FS comes out. So FS 21, because odd numbers are console and PC, even numbers are mobile. I don't play mobile anymore. That's how I got into FS, actually. I played mobile. I'm also going to be doing a little covering of these. These, if you follow Forza and you play Forza, you know what these are. 
These, I've had these forever and I'm so stoked they decided to do it. They recently, Forza Horizon 4, or Turn 10 Games, have decided to partner up with Hasbro, and specifically the Lego, the Lego part of Hasbro, and come out with Forza Horizon 4 Lego expansion. So the whole world is Legos. There's Lego bushes, Lego characters, Lego cars, Lego buildings, everything is Legos. And I think that's such a cool idea that these two massive department, these two massive parts of um, just uh, having fun and enjoying yourself and just the American dream of having just everything just put just, uh, it just makes me lost for words like Hasbro covers the whole huge gaming side and Forza Horizon 4 is a huge relatively I'm not going to say it's huge because there's obviously a lot of people who like playing Fortnite and like playing what else are you playing right now I love playing GTA recently I've been playing GTA 5 and I'll probably do a GTA 5 stream some point over the summer, and just ugh. like when I come back, I'm gonna do a spending spree. I'm gonna get around 3.5 million. I'm gonna have around 3.5 million by the time I come back. I'm gonna buy probably the apartment, which is the 10 car, which has 10 car garage. And I'm probably gonna buy the um, what was I gonna buy? I was gonna buy a Karuma. So that's around 1.5 million gone. Kuruma and apartment, that's 1.5 gone. That leaves me with 2 million. And the hypercar that I want, it's a supercar. It's classified as a supercar, but it's the newer one that, it's the newer one that they released is supposed to be the best supercar. And I find that whenever I find one in my lobby, when I'm racing, I lose to it. And most of the time they're higher level anyway, so they're better racers. And they have a lot more money, so they have better cars anyways. Um, I could also buy the T20, which when I've raced with the T20, I haven't. Uh, the T20 is a good car for when you're doing um, not straight races. When you're doing stuff like wall rides and stuff like that, the T20 is amazing because it has good traction and everything. I love the T20 for that. I also love the Zentorno. Which is in Toronto, it's a very classic car when it comes to GTA. Um, the one I have right now sells for $444,000. So I've had it for so long that it's depreciated about $300,000. So almost half its price is gone. It's gone through a couple different colors. I really want to do it um, ice white with lime green. I have ice white unlocked, lime green. It's just stupid because you need to do all these stun jumps to unlock lime green. You do, I think I need to do 29 more stunt jumps. And there's only 50, I think, in the game. 50 or 40. One of the two. And obviously, it's going to take a lot of time and effort to do all the stunt jumps, land all the jumps perfectly with the traffic and all the people online. It's just, ugh, it can be kind of annoying. But. Oh, this lighting's killing me. Because like as soon as I turn to the side, it gets dark. So like if it was turned this way, I'd have the light coming in from that side, plus a little bit of light coming in from this side. If that was just a little dimmer, I'd say I'd do it. I could also go into edit. I could also edit this after and make it a little darker. Like I can do certain kinds of edits on my phone. Plus, I recently freed up a bit of space, so I'm, I might download a video editor app. So I, mean, I can do a little bit of editing. Because right now, when you see jump cuts, literally pause and recording. And it's ones where I know I can come back and something's gonna go. And stuff in like challenges where it takes time to go get a ball. Like in the video I'm uploading right now. But back to the topic of Pennsylvania. I have a quick little poll slash question. Not very many people watch in the comment and watch let alone post in the comments, but when I'm in Pennsylvania, I'm going to be playing golf with my grandfather, potentially tennis, so I could have a call, like a 10-15 minute long video, 
I could also do a couple, a couple holes on the golf course. Maybe like the first nine, ten, and just a couple in between. A couple holes that I like, I could record. Also record 20 minutes when I go to the driving range, which could work. Because the driving range we go to, it goes downhill. So when you hit, it goes out over the trees. There's trees in the background instead. And like it's not brown, you're hitting up into the green part of the tree so you can see the ball a bit better. And also just downrange you can see a lot better because you're looking down on the ball. Anyway, what else am I going to do? I might do a couple workout videos when I'm there just because you guys don't see me work out. Honestly, just go to the gym, work out there. I'm not going to record too much in the gym. Could post on Instagram, by the way. That's a good thing. I might add that in the description of this. Um, Adidas has done a couple things on their Instagram, Adidas has, where it's like, you have to have 100 followers, and I have 100 followers on Instagram. But it's just like, um, it's like, we'll send you a pair of cleats or something. We'll send you like a pair of cleats or some uh, product to try out. And you'll just have to mention it, post about it on your Instagram. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'd love to try out some Adidas cleats, Nemesis, pair of Nemesis for, for, for say, something like that. Pair of Nemesis, new pair of Predators. I'd love to wear those. It can be a great way to test out a beautiful pair of cleats, which the Nemesis and the um, Predators are. I'd love to see the Predators in the um, blue gold version, blue, gold, and black colorway that they've come out with Nemesis X's. I uh, haven't seen the Copas. Are the Copas in blue and gold? No, I don't think there is. I think I've seen the Nemesis and the X's. Those look the absolute best in that um, blue and gold. The X's look the best by far. The Nemesis are pretty close. The Nemesis are... You don't see a lot of people complain about the Nemesis because some people think they're ugly some people think they're amazing. Um, they're obviously a narrow cleat. Which I've heard a couple complaints about from people saying that they're too narrow. Well, that's the whole point. It's supposed to be speed and agility. You can't be agile with a cleat that flops around on your foot. It's going to take an extra second for your foot to hit the edge of that cleat and then to be able to push off with it. So having them be tight is exactly what you need for speed and agility. You can't jump when you go to run. You can't jump when you go to run and expect the cleat to move and not take you an extra split second. That fraction of a second can kill you in a sprint race when you're racing somebody. Right. Bad example. But these, these, you can see, relatively narrow. They're also a smaller cleat for their width. They're relatively narrow. Obviously, cleats are quite narrow in general. But, like, compare them to something like these where they're this long, but they're that wide. Like, they're wider, yet they're smaller. So these are a size 7, and these are a size 10. These are wider, and yet, they put all these customization, they put all these cool new ideas into it. Let's put some grips on the outside, let's change the laces over, get it out of your striking path. Because back then, nobody hit it with the outside of your foot. The outside of your foot was useless. Roberto Carlos. People can say, oh, Roberto Carlos, the way he hit his free kicks, it curled like this and he was left footed. Well, guess what? He hit with the inside of his foot and across his laces and he spun it. This, he spun it like this with his left foot. Well, for me, this way, because this is my left side, so spinning it this way, you'd be striking across this way and it'd spin this way and come around. For people who are right footed, you'd hit this way and it'd spin this way. Which works, it only works in certain situations, like if the, if you're on the left side of the net and you're right footed, you can do that because it'll curl around the wall just like a left footed person can do with their left foot. Obviously it's got a bit more power because it's more laces and everything. But, I don't know. I've cleared up about five jigs on my memory card, so I've got plenty of room when I go down there. It's just gonna be probably around two weeks where I'm not gonna upload, then I'm gonna come back, try and get a bunch of uploads, uh, prepped, ready, edited, everything, a little bit of editing I can do, try and do that, 
and then I'm off on a family vacation the next week. So my last summer league game is tomorrow. I'm not playing another summer league game till next summer. So the rest of the summer is free for me from high school games. I'll probably have conditioning, I'll have tryouts, I'll have my actual first league match before school even starts for soccer. Um, hopefully I'll get that varsity varsity certificate for two years in a row get my second varsity pin put it on my letter and then um, hopefully I get my varsity pin for golf as well that'd be amazing this little golf ball stick that on there as well and uh, I can letter potentially seven times potentially get seven little pins to put on that ball which will be I wouldn't be complaining about I think it's stupid why my coach won't split time. Um, next year, my coach is going to have to split time going into soccer, like equally, because there's another keeper coming in. There's my friend Carter. His younger brother, Wyatt, plays in net. He could take that JV spot all he wants. I'm swing, so I've played in varsity. I've played in JV. So, like, I got my varsity letter because I've played in varsity. Obviously, I ain't no Diego Fagundes making making it to MLS at 15, 16. I'm 15 now. I'm not there. Like, I'm at an ECNL. I'm going to be doing my best, my damn best, to make it to that. To be one of the people who I'm looking at on the wall. I love to see myself on the wall. That's something that I, like, I can look up and I can be like, I can picture myself in that shirt doing job that I want to do which most people they'll just say yeah cool whatever you do what you want whatever you want to do for me it's like it's not just like it's not a dream it's something I really want to be a reality and like I'll work my ass off to get it to actually happen like these cars these aren't the yeah these can be something you want in life but like you can want anything you want in your life, but if you don't think you can achieve it, you're never gonna get there. I, mean, I think I can do it. I can work my ass off. I can go to the gym every day like I have been doing. I can continue training with my ECNL team, make it to the DA team, get a ride to college, um, potentially go overseas to go to college, go over to England, where college is a hell of a lot cheaper, and obviously soccer is big, huge over there, so getting picked up by any club over there in England would be insane. I could play for Crew Alexandra, or Alexandra Crew, Crew Alexandra, there we go, which is, um, their professional team isn't that good because they focus on their academy. Their academy builds up all their high level players, and they play, and they sell those players, like their contracts and their rights over to another team, over to a bigger club, so like they're that melting pot where everybody comes in and you come out making money and they make the money to go get new players to play for their recruiters to pay for their coaches to pay for their facilities they take all the money they earn from trading those players away and selling those players away to big clubs they take all that money and they put it back into that club so they then keep doing it so their profession their like high level club isn't their best players they've had come through in that age group it's their players that they kept because not, I'm not going to say because nobody wanted them. It's the players that they kept because they were good players, but they weren't worth as much as they were hoping they'd end up to be worth. So, like, they kept them. Because at that point, in some way, it's so expensive to play on the nice grass, to pay for the nice grass fields, the coaches, all the time, all the effort, everything that goes into those players. If they don't make an even turnaround, you're just going to keep them on board. Because it's just because you're losing a lot less money because that player could potentially be a gold mine in the making. Like, he might not be good at one year, but, like, he'd come back the next year, right, he'd work his ass off and get that professional contract and just go on to that next level. And you could get a player who goes from being worth, like, nothing compared to what you spent on them to being worth three times as much as you spent on them in two, three years. And it's just like, I'm so glad I kept this player. It's like I've got, not only do you get to 
see them go on to do something better. You get to see them grow, develop, and progress, and grow as a person, which I love to see in people. Where, like for me, playing all that time at my premier club, Liverpool, uh, Spirit of Liverpool, or Liverpool F LF LFSC at Liverpool Football Soccer Club, which it was before that changed Spirit of Liverpool, and then now I'm at the Boston Bolts out of Boston, the actual main one out of Boston, not any of the ones across the country, the one in Boston, the ECNL team that went to Colorado to play for the national championships, that's the team I've been selected to play on, and I was going up against their keepers who they'd known. So like they'd known their keepers, they'd known the keepers on that team, and I came in. I was I trained with them for about three, yeah, three four months. I'd been training with them, and I went in, went to their ID camp, and I was offered an ECNL spot, which I was happy with. I was like I was there for ECNL. I'm like DA, um, I can't come in from an NEP team where the kids aren't playing like. There's not 11 of the top players on the field. It's like one or two per team, sometimes two or three. You don't get often full teams of just a full 11 all-around great team. Like if you were to go to England, play, go to either Liverpool or Chelsea, if you were to go to either of these places, um, even like if you were to go, no, I'm not going to use the Revs as an example because my ODP team beat the New England Revolution team. In the flex. <laughs> um, but like, if you were to go to either of these teams, kids could just. Like, the, the whole team from front to back would be just as good as the next with the ball at their feet, passing, reading the game. They're all like, compared to us. We, everybody over in England and over and just in Europe, I'm going to go with Europe actually, looks like messy. Like little messies these kids do compared to some of the kids over here in the U.S. Who, the teams over here at our age group, I went over and I played against the team, teams over there in our age group. It's ridiculous. Like we played against like, there's like state, they're called states, but they're really like, regions, the counties, they're like state champions over in um, England, we played against them, from front to back, they were conditioned, toned, built, tough, strong, brave, they were in, they were just all round well fit to play the game, they, it's not, it's a whole nother thing over in England. And if anybody gets a chance to go over there and play, it, it <laughs> God help you. It's like my team went over, we were 1-1-1. One, one, one. Like, we won one, tied one, lost one. One win, one loss, one tie. And that's all she wrote over there. Then we went to, obviously, we went to two matches, toured two stadiums. Um, I want to say, to be honest, Chelsea... Your tour was ten times. Your tour was. I'm not gonna say ten times. I'm gonna say it's at least three, four times better. Because at Liverpool, they're trying to go into the new age of technology at Anfield, but you don't feel so immersed when you take the tour. Because at Anfield, you have the earbuds in your ear, the thing around your neck, the thing you press play on, and you just walk around, and talks to you in your ears. Nobody's giving you a true tour. There's people here and there, like some, there's, like, they have it well set up. In the beginning, I was like, oh, this is going to be a sick tour. Because then we walked in, we had, like, first off, we went up, like, six flights of stairs. And I was like, Jesus, like, there's no elevator? Like, there's no elevator? There's no, like, high-capacity elevator? You can just, like, really? You're going to make people who come in here pay decent money. It's, the tour of Anfield's not insanely expensive. But, like, you're gonna make pay that kind of money to walk to get their full days worth of exercise in before they even take the tour. Like you're walking up the stairs, you're getting all this prehistory and all that. 
of the stadium as you're walking up the stairs and just like not kind of you're kind of half paying attention because you're like focusing because you're like ugh duh. you're like about a fifth flight you're like ugh how many more flights are we gonna go up um then all of a sudden once you get towards the top there's escalators it's like they knew you're gonna die out by the time you hit the top this was actually an image that my dad took on his phone from the main stand so like if you look at oh, I completely forget what the hell that's what, that, what that's called oh that's that's all the stands had different names I forget what the stand what the stand's name is I forget what the name of that stand is. And I don't think very many, very many people are going to know. Especially considering how limited people who watch my videos are. Don't know what this stand is. Um, LFC Museum and Tour Center. Yep. This was that, that image taken from the main stand. Obviously we zoomed in because we were wicked far away. We were a whole field away. If you could see right here... There's this little gray dot. That is actually, like, it's like a minute. It's like a roll. It's like a portable greenhouse, and they plop it down in the field, it's particularly in the boxes, and sometimes around the center. All right. Um, sometimes around the top of the box, you get a lot of action. But especially right on top of the six-yard box, inside the six-yard box, right where the keeper is, a nine times out of ten, um, that will be, because. Um, the grass is killed. The grass turns like the grass was like brown, kind of. Like you could cut, like for me, I can kind of see on that. Like the color, it's kind of it's kind of brown around the edges because the grass kind of died because it was stomped on so much. And the fields here, um, at Stanford Bridge, which is the one over here, which is, looks a lot greener, but that's only because we were at Liverpool when it was kind of uh, ugly. And we went to Stanford Bridge, and the skies were bright blue, sun was out, and it was like, wow. And you could truly see, like, they're both the same style fields. One's checkered, one is, um, and the other's, one's checkered, and so is the other. They're both, um, they're both hybrids. Well, so that means... It's art. It's um, artificial turf, sand, and grassy is put in as well. So real grass will grow with the artificial turf, so they can play in their blades. They can play in their studs. They can play whatever they want really over there in England, because you have this beautiful grass. It's also turf. That's what helps. Also, that's what makes it so easy to put these checkered patterns in. Because, um, obviously, it's a pain in the butt to mow. A bunch of checkered patterns in here. I'll turn it so they can see. You can see all the checkered patterns. So, like, one's super light. One's relatively light. One's darker. One's the darkest. And you have these four all clumped together. It's four, 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 four the whole way around the field. Of these, like, light, lighter, light, darker, darker. Light, darker, dark, darkest of these like of these just groups of four that make a square, and that's all possible because of the way the artificial turf is angled. So like if you turn a plate, it will have it go this. The grass will be this way, but then if you turn it this way, the grass will be this way. And then if you keep turning them, it'll form these different colors depending on where you look at it. Really, the field can look different depending on what angle you're looking at it from. So that's what lets those happen. Uh, um, the lightest is the ones facing away from you. And then obviously the ones that are facing this way. It kind of depends on what angle you're looking at. So for us, we're kind of looking against it. Kind of looking back that way. On this one, kind of looking back that way. Which for me is kind of that way. Not fruit. Me, it's that way. For you, it's that way. 
if you were to be like facing the other way. Um, since we were slightly on an angle, it was fa it, it was slightly darker than the one that was facing slightly on the angle we were looking. And then there's the darkest one, which is facing pretty much straight at you. So that's why there's the two that are closest are relatively similar in darkness because they're facing away from us. But I'm explaining how fields work. I'm just rambling on this video. I was going to say, like, I'm going to record them in Pennsylvania. Um, I'll probably do some stuff in the backyard. Um, so they have a huge backyard. I can do kind of whatever I want. Um, wish I had a GoPro. That could be something because I go to Hershey Park. Because we go to Hershey Park. But GoPro. Because there's water slides and everything. So like, I can record a video while I'm walking around in Hershey Park. I record like what I'm gonna go on. I can do all this different crap. But it's like, it's just like it's not really worth it. Like, cause you, I mean, yeah, you walk around for a lot of the day, but it's just like, I really want to record while I'm walking around Hershey Park. It's like, nah, I don't know. It's like I have a feeling that a lot of the time it's gonna be me playing sports and me working out when I'm in Pennsylvania, cause I'm gonna have my daily workout routine that I'm gonna have to do. My full circuits. Um, I might do a couple hill sprints up and down the hill because they have a big hill in their front yard, also a driveway. Um, um, they have a long road. Um, Do a lap around the road that's there at their house with a bike. There, my uncle drives a bike. It's a BMX bike. And like, so when I go, there's a road. When I come out the driveway, I go right. Then instantly I'll turn. Uh, I'll go left and I'll instantly turn right. And I'll turn right up on, on the fork and I'll go up this road, up this hill, and through this like kind of tiny development. Houses on either side, you'll go up, you'll go the whole way down, you'll come out um, by this field, and you'll turn right, and you'll keep going, and and then you'll turn right on the Shaker Church Road. Oops. So, anybody is around Pennsylvania when I'm there, Shaker Church Road. Greenhouse. See you there. Play around, I don't know, hang it. Play around the golf. I don't know. Screw around the backyard. I don't. Know. Have I ever even showed my golf clubs? I just thought about that. Have I? Have I? I don't know. I'm thinking. Also, at my grandparents' house is a tennis racket. So, I have a nice tennis racket. Be a pretty big head. It's like a up. It's Djokovic. I think it's Djokovic, his ragged. It's not fatter, it's Djokovic, his ragged. It's a neon green orange. Cause that's just how I roll. Um, these bad boys will be going with me, my black shoes will be going with me, a lot of my, um, a lot of my stuff will be going with me. Um, I potentially, while I'm there, I bring a pair of cleats, I could potentially convince my grandfather, my grandfather play foot golf which would be kind of fun but like I don't know if he will I don't know if he'll be very happy when you're kicking his ass because that's probably what would happen I'm also just rambling on because oh my god I forgot I can't see what time it is and you really want, I might actually just show you the setup because I'm chilling here yeah sitting in that because you're propped up up there and behind here behind the seats um, I could try and make it so this works. I've been sitting down for too long. I don't ever get this. Oh no, this barely gets warm. So that hat chilling there is perfectly fine. So I might turn this this way. And when I do this. I might try 
was like, that would be a perfect setup. And I'll just be like, chilling here. And that could work perfect. Well, that could actually be a perfect setup. I could switch these in the T90s. T90s can go there. Gloves can go there. Actually, it's not terrible, but I'm gonna blinding white light in the corner. I might pause it and I'll come back when I have that problem sorted out. Okay, lighting problem sorted out. I actually like that. It looks pretty good. I'll put a poster in the background or something. I'll figure something out. But, in terms of what I'm working with, I'm actually kind of liking that. What can I do? Come back home. I don't know. I'll figure something out. For now, this will actually work quite well for a nice little setup. Got my T90s here, gloves here. I'd love to see it. Obviously, pretty rel relatively nice setup in the background. Oh, so we got all the scarves. I didn't fix the scarf actually that I knocked down. Jesus, I'm an idiot. Ooh. What's good, boys? This hat I got from New England Revolution, not very many people are going to have that hat. No, actually, isn't that bad? I thought that'd be way worse. I thought it'd take way longer as well. It took me like two minutes. So, stuff in the background might be alternated. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff I can put in. Can't really see the wall next to me. I could shift this over, tilt it a little bit, but I'm not in the mood because chilling almost at 50 minutes. And obviously, I don't really want to go to an hour because this is just a normal video. And it's going to take me like 20, probably like a half hour to upload. <laughs> like, I could if I really wanted to. I could start putting these up in places. I'm thinking, I can think of a couple places. Um, potentially, I could set them up in there. There's a nice, I have a couple little things I could use to set them up. I could put them in there in my little display case for all my stuff i'd call it a day just keep them in there um right now two of them are downstairs one of them i do use so when i get forza horizon oh my god it's gonna be forza horizon 5 um obviously i play forza horizon 2 i did not there was no i don't think there, was, there might have been an ultimate edition of that i don't think there was it started being called ultimate edition in three in Forza Horizon 2, there was obviously um, Storm Island. Forza Horizon 3, there was Hot Wheels. The Snow Place. And Blizzard Mountain. Got it. And was there one more? Was there three? I know there's two. Because in Forza Horizon 2, there was Storm Island. 
Forza Horizon, there was zero. Forza Horizon 2, there was Storm Island. Forza Horizon 3, there was two. Forza Horizon 4, there is three, two, two. Two currently. Potential third on the way. Because right now we have Treasure Island and the uh, Lego plate, Legos. So we have the Legos and the Treasure Island, which I got about 10 million from. So I haven't played Forza Horizon 4 on stream yet. Should I still play Minecraft again? Just a question. Like, 